All right, now that uh, this thing has finally decided to show back up, right? So, let's see if we're ready. Class! Yes. Thank you. I know no one has earbuds in right now, right? Because this is a recording, and when I share with your parents, that I don't have to tell them that you got earbuds in. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so, uh, right here, this is going to be on page 17 in my notebook. Also, there is going to be a notebook check coming up here on Friday. I'm just going to ask you to leave it here. As in tomorrow? Yeah. Huh? So, you're going to leave it here, and then I'm going to grade it over the ID. So, Are we got an ID on Monday? Yeah. Mon Monday's an ID. Okay. But there's also going to be an ID assignment, which most people don't do. And if you don't do, guess what? It you know yeah, it grade drops. Okay, last time it was the practice test, and only like 10 people did it. That was crazy. Okay, yes, this one is going to be the essentials one. So I'm hoping you guys go back, do some math, practice your stuff, and I will assign it tomorrow so you can already start working on it because it's got to be done for Monday. Um, is that like 40, 50 questions? No, okay, it's not. Anyway. Um, okay, Javi, what were you saying? You were trying to say something while I was... What are you grading on the number? Uh, I should be grading up to, I believe, 15. 15. I should be grading up to 15, I think. So, you should have all the homework done anyway, because I believe, to, is it today? Is 8-5 due today? Yeah, okay. Or yesterday? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, so cars... Hopefully, everyone in here at some point will be able to get a driver's license and get a car. You know what's sad? I know a lot of people that are over twenty that still don't have a license. That's embarrassing. And, and don't don't even like don't even care. You're one of them. You sell cars, fool. The fuck? How that work? <laughs> All right, then. Anyway, so mathematics of finance in a car. A loan that you pay off with weekly or monthly payments or payments that in some other time period is called an installment loan. Yeah. The advantage of an installment loan is that the consumer gets the product immediately. You buy the car and you just keep making payments. The disadvantage is that the interest can add a substantial amount to the cost of a purchase. Let's so begin with car loans that you make regular monthly payments called a fixed installment loan. Okay, you'll most likely all just be in the fixed installment loan. So you go sign the thing and you'll be like, all right, my monthly payment's gonna be X for, you know, four, five, six years, depending on what type of vehicle. Hey doctor, how many years did you get? I got, I got five. How much? Five years? Yeah. Okay. How much? So, so yeah. It used to be common that people would take a four-year loan for, for a car, but now they're extending it just to try and make the monthly payments more manageable. I've hear people have now taken an eight-year car loan. Ain't no way. They tried, they tried that. I'm not... I'm not yeah. That. Yeah. And that's... Eight years and, and you'll find out why that is actually going to be not very good. A, de a decade, a decade of my life? I don't know. Okay. So, see this formula right here? Okay, uh, yes, it's in the notes. Yes, it's going to say it on your screen. Don't do it. What are we looking for here? We're looking for the... What do we use instead? Numbers. Finance solver, right? Yes. The Numbers finance solver. Okay, I have people still coming to me asking me how to do this. I'm like, dude, just put it in your freaking calculator. Shit. Just do that. Be so odd. God, man. God. Peanut, you know, it's your dinner. What? Can you show us how to do it with the equation? Come on, Bobby. I don't want to. Damn. I love math. I hate doing this. I do. The financial solver is so much easier because you can manipulate it. You can change your number of years, change everything, and it's easy. And yeah, so anyway, work smarter, not harder. Six years ago, did, did our ancestors say that Pasha? No, they did the math. Why is it even? I why is the high percentage? You know, Actually, my you know what my ancestors did? What? Okay, they were smart enough to come up with a way to create a finance solver. Whatever. I 
it, when I took my class on this, you know what I did? I actually made my own program in Excel to do this so I don't have to do it every time. I my own program. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it tell, you just say it, tell it what to do, and it does it. So, yes, it makes life easier. So, suppose that you decide to borrow $30,000 for a new car, you can select one of the following loans. Each requiring regular monthly payments. Ooh, monthly. How many times a year do we make payments? Twelve. I'm still having people struggle with that part. That shit crazy. Installment loan for A is a four-year loan at 3%. Installment B, six-year loan at 4%. Find the monthly payments total install, uh, interest for loan A. I, seriously, every time I, I see someone come up to me and you don't have this stuff written down, it just like, uh, like I, I just like, yeah, I just, ah! No. You're at, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> ah! You don't want to see me when I'm angry. Anyway, and I... PV, PMT, F, V, P, P, Y, C, P, Y, and these are all at the end. Bless you, I think. Did DJ spray that crap again? Is that what it is? Yes. Oh. Right? Go wash that thing. Seriously, don't just spray stuff to cover it up. Don't wash that thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, so we make monthly payments on for loan A. Yeah. Monthly payments, right? So that's going to be 12 times 4. 48. My interest rate on that loan. 3% of 300,000. Just three. Present value, how much is that car worth? 30,000. You're not driving a Bentley. Shit, I could. You could what? <laughs> anyway, it's 30,000. Payment. That's what we're looking for here. We're trying to solve for the payment. Future value of all loans you want to be zero. zero. All loans you want future value to be zero. Payments per year, 12, CPY, 12, and this is at the end. Numworks, finance, okay, kind of like crackheads that are never here. You'll find it now. No problem, no problem. Okay, compound interest. Now we go down, we select that we're looking for the payment. Finance. My number of payments is 48. Compound interest, you said. My interest right. was, was it three or four? This is three. Three percent interest. Let's see. Present value, 30,000. Future value, zero. zero. PPY 12, CPY 12, and That's right it. here. Okay. To make your homie actually do it too. So we're in the negatives. No, not negatives. It's negative because it's coming out your pocket. Yeah. So it is going to be 6603. 6403. Now, to get total interest, anyone recall total interest? Uh, oh, you payment, do the payment minus the. the it's payment times uh, P, payment times A something like minus that. The, or C, so minus the P times payment times. Minus the N. Wait, no, minus, minus the PV. Like I said. Okay, when you borrow money, it goes like this. Okay, so when we're investing money, it goes the other way. I go with the future value. I go future value minus the payment times N. Okay. Did you write it down? Yeah. Did you already plug them in? Yep.
should, you should like, you should like calculate my taxes. Hey, Kiliberto, did you get it yet? No. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna call on you here in a second because I know you got this. My taxes. I got my W two. Care about you? Grab notes. Eighteen thirty three point three four. Say it again. Eighteen thirty three point. Yeah. Uh, good point. Okay. So that means that we're going to pay back the $30,000 plus $1,873.44. Damn. Okay. It's not bad. It's, it's the cost of borrowing money for a new car. Okay. It's kind of how it works. That, that's why if you're able to save up the money in the first place, you could save yourself almost $2,000. Okay. By not having a finance. All right. Buy cash money. Yep. Loan B. We're doing the same thing for loan B now. Uh, N I P V P M T F V P P Y C P Y. So. So N is seventy two. This is going to be a six-year loan at 4%. So if it's a six-year loan, six times 12 gives me 72. 72. I, 4%. PV, still my 30,000. Payments, what I'm looking for. Future value, I want to be zero. Payments per year. 12, CPY is 12, and at the end. Not really. I'm good. I just haven't had my coffee yet. Coffee, you're not making that coffee no more? Okay. Change it to 72. Oh, it's your or birthday? 30,000. Oh, shit. I don't want to tell me. We had cupcakes and everything, too. Yeah, bro. Bro. yeah the party is a party, bro. Not so, no, you're lying to me at this no, point. No, we did no. Yeah, it, it was like straight fourth grade again in here. It, it was nice. Yeah, at least I had little slices of pizza. That's right. So, <laughs> what do we get? 469, 30. Four, six, five. All right. 36. 36. 36. There we go. There we go. So I can look at the next one. So 469.36. Look, he's kind of easy. All right. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to try and calculate for my total interest. Again, it is going to be my PMT times N minus PB. So 469.36 times 72 minus 30,000. Say what? Three seven? Yeah, three seven, nine, three point nine two. Nine two? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so now comparing these two loans. By looking at the monthly payments, this one right here. Whoa. Oh, you alright? I thought it was black. Dang. Oh my gosh. What the heck was that? Oh no. Oh man. Anyway. Okay. My loan for A is six sixty four, and my loan for B is four sixty nine. So now you're taking the difference. So this is where they get you. This is where they get you right here. The monthly payment sounds better for this one, doesn't it? Yeah. 
But how much do you pay in interest over the t life of the loan? Almost double ten. You're right. I hear the best one. Okay, it is going to be three thousand seven hundred ninety-three ninety-two versus my initial of eighteen. So it actually is double. Eighteen times two is thirty-six. We are at thirty-seven. Yeah, it is. So when you have to go out and start adulting, they're going to give you these options. Oh my gosh. Okay. You get higher interest over a long period of time, but they get you in the end. That's probably what's going to end up happening because a lot of times you just got to go with it because you don't have the month, the, the income to make the $600 monthly payment. You can afford that. Okay, you're just going to end up paying for it at the end because a lot of people in here don't have good credit yet. So, and we are, last one, compared to monthly payments and total interest. So, the better payment, so, yes, go, no, get her. So, B has better payments. <laughs> But A, less interest overall. Language, come on. If I can't post these videos because... <sighs> Okay, you're, you're home, you. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're just going to talk about the vocabulary here, and then I'm going to leave off before we leave. We start the next example, but this is important. So leasing is the practice of paying a specific amount of money over a specific time for the use of a product. Leasing is a long-term rental agreement. You don't own the car. You don't. It's not your car. Okay? You're borrowing the car, but you're paying almost a full car payment to borrow the car. And at the end, at the end of the lease, you just give it back. That's crazy. And then they charge you more if you went over the mileage you were supposed to go. A close and lease each month, you make a fixed payment based on estimated usage. When the lease ends, you return the car and pay for mileage in excess of your estimate. So, it's not really worth it. It's renting. Kind of like when we were talking the other day about actually homes. Okay, if you're renting some place to live, okay, you're probably paying as much, if not more, to rent someplace than you would if you were able to buy someplace. Okay, open end lease. Each month you make a fixed payment based on the car's residual value. Residual value is the estimated resale value of the car at the end of the lease and is determined by the dealer. When the lease ends, you return the car and make payment based on its appraised value at the time compared to its residual value. If the appraised value is less than the residual value stated, in the lease, you pay all or a portion of its difference. If the appraised value is greater than or equal to the residual value, you owe nothing, you may receive a refund. Now, don't ever try to do this. That sounds like a lot of bullshit. Oh, okay, don't, don't ever. I really like, yeah, don't do that. Because you're renting a car, and then you're hoping that it's still going to be worth money when you give it back. But the problem is, a car loses almost half its retail value after you drive it off the lot the first time. Shit crazy. Hey. Start your language, child. Sorry. Man. Give me team monetize again. Hey! Bleep! Bleep! Get oh, together back up. I need to just give you some bleep buttons. Every time you start talking, you, you already know what's coming. Just bleep it. Just bleep it. As you're talking, just bleep yourself. <sighs> Advantages. Lease requires only a small down payment or no down payment at all. Lease payments for a new car are lower than loan payments on the same car. 
Most people can lease a more expensive car than they would be able to buy. When the lease ends, you return the car to the dealer and don't have to be concerned about selling the car. If you don't have the money, but you need a car, you're basically renting. That's what a lease is good for. If you really can't afford buying it, you need a car now. Or let's say, for instance, you move, you know, you move around because you work. You plan on staying each place only about a year. You know, you go to big cities. Usually big cities have transportation. So Philadelphia, New York, L.A., whatever they are. So wherever you go, you could just, after that year, turn the car in. And wherever you end up going, if you're able, if you need a car there, just go lease another car. You can get a one-year lease. Just borrow a car. That's it. Disadvantages. When the lease ends, you do not own the car. Mile, most lease agreements will have mileage limits of 12,000 to fi, uh, 15,000 miles per year. It is common. If you exceed number of miles allowed, there can be considerable charges. So if you travel a lot out of town, yes, that is a lot. Okay. And they do charge like 25 cents a mile or something like that. It's crazy. When the mileage penalties and the other costs at the end of the leasing period are taken into consideration, total cost of leasing is almost always more expensive than financing a car. While leasing the car, you are responsible for keeping it in perfect condition. You are liable for any damage to the car, any scratches. If you ever go to Walmart parking lot, you know it's going to come out with a whole bunch of scratches. Big time. Okay, you're going to have a crackhead living in your back seat by the time you leave the parking lot. Okay, while leasing the car, you were responsible for key. Uh, wait here, here. Leasing does not cover maintenance. You have to do, you have to buy tires, you have to do all oil change, all that other stuff. There are penalties for ending the lease early. So it's it's not good. It's not good, but it's still rental. Use words? No? Good? Okay. Damn, bro. That's a lot. Okay. Auto insurance. Okay. Another scam. When you purchase insurance, you buy protection against loss associated with unexpected events. Different types of coverages are so associated with auto insurance, but the one required by nearly every state is liability. There are two components of liability coverage. Bodily injury liability covers the cost of a lawsuit if someone is injured or killed in an accident in which that you are at fault. Property damage liability covers damage to other cars and property from negligent operation of your vehicle. Uh -huh. Now, okay, hey, to tell you, these right here don't cover crap. They don't. They don't cover anything. Like so, no, 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 seriously, it's, it doesn't cover enough to even fix most vehicles. And if you get in an accident and you only have this, but you're, the guy that hits you has no insurance at all, guess what? Your insurance doesn't cover it either. So your car is now trashed and his car is, and, and his car is trashed. Car Nothing happens. So... I, I will highly recommend right now, personally, okay, all my vehicles, almost all my vehicles are paid off. They all still carry full coverage. What full coverage does is it covers people even like this guy right here, where Diddy, yeah, you know he ain't got no car insurance, right? I shall that hoopty that he's driving <laughs> around, okay, he, he's still he's still riding on that, that donut spare tire for the last Stop six months, you. okay? <laughs> Doesn't have car insurance. He hits my car. Okay. So if I only had the limited liability, my car would be trashed and he has a piece of crap and he doesn't care. But if you have full coverage that covers people that also don't have insurance. I've had more than one time in which that someone, it's either me or my, yeah, my daughter, not my son. So my daughter's been in two accidents. Okay. The people that has hit her didn't have insurance. Damn. They didn't have insurance. But because I made sure we had full coverage all the time, my vehicle got fixed. Their vehicle, it's gone. Yeah, they just, yeah. But yeah, so, and with the full coverage, your insurance company goes after them also. So they will sue the person themselves if they don't have insurance. But you don't have to worry about it. All your stuff's taken care of. Full coverage is 
Super important. Okay, uh, okay, so. Okay, collision coverage pays for damage or loss of your car if you're in an accident. Comprehensive coverage protects your car from such as fire, theft, objects falling, acts of nature, collision with an animal. Oh, yeah. Full coverage oh, also like the temporary oh, car until your car gets fixed. Depends on your, your plan. If it covers rentals. What? Full coverage co covers all four. All of them? And then, yes. So, and it, one of the things, so right up in here, so acts of crackheads. You know, you know, you as just like driving that count back, some crackhead's gonna jump up on the hood of your car and just start like asking you for money or something while you're driving. You know what's gonna happen right there at Zia Records, right there at that library I'll stop. Mm -hmm. I've seen a video of it. Okay. Crackhead jumped on a car. The guy like took off speedings like 80 with the crackhead attached to the back of his car. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna stop right there for today. You guys are going to start working on your assignment, and 8.5 should be due today.